In this episode, we're going to hear some crazy government experiments gone wrong. Then we have several strange and unworldly encounters from hikers across the country. But before we get into the stories, if you're a regular viewer of the show and enjoy the stories, show that subscribe button who's the boss. Now let's get into the stories. Hi Donovan. I used to work for the government, and I can tell you that some of the creatures that you speak about do in fact exist. We actually go to great lengths to hide certain creations, genetic experiments, and other things that I can't fully go into here. I can tell you that there are things out there that we have created, but they are not what people think. There is a lot more to the story than most people will ever know. I can tell you that I've seen them with my own eyes. Some are not as big as people make them out to be. I can also tell you that the government has been working on mind control for decades now, and it's getting better all of the time. We've had great success with animals, especially in the Canidae family. I am telling you this because some of the accounts that you read were probably a result of a mind control experiment gone wrong, or maybe even right. The government has been doing this for years and they keep it under wraps very well. What happens is sometimes these animals, or should I say experiments, get loose and cause havoc in society. So they need to be dealt with in order to protect the public from harm and injury. Some of these animals are basically large dogs with an attitude problem due to their genetic manipulation which gives them human-like attributes such as advanced reasoning skills. They can also be very aggressive and dangerous. I know this all sounds crazy, but I'm telling you the truth. I have seen them with my own eyes, and so have many other workers who work for the government. We keep it under wraps because we don't want the public to panic or fear these creatures. They are just doing what they were created to do. I'm telling you this because I know that you're interested in the truth and not some made-up story. However, there will be people who doubt this, which is why I can send this to you. Because it can easily be passed off as some type of conspiracy, and nothing is ever looked into or researched. When I say research, I'm not talking about what you can find on a Google search. That's almost laughable. There are resources on the dark web that outline some of the things that exist. I say some because no one truly knows, or shall I say, has been exposed to all of the experiments that the government has done over the years. But I must warn you and others not to throw caution to the wind and just start exploring the dark web for answers. Unless you are highly skilled and know how to navigate it, just consider yourself fully exposed and possibly hacked the second you enter. You can research that on your own time. I can't go into great details because honestly, I could write a novel about all of the things that I've witnessed. However, I will share with you one experiment that was conducted in the early 90s. It was a mind control experiment that went horribly wrong with a silverback gorilla. The gorilla was a massive animal and the government wanted to see if they could control its mind. They were successful in doing so at first. We were able to give it advanced instructions and it would perform very detailed tactical maneuvers. However, the experiment ended up going south. We lost control of the gorilla and it killed two scientists and four security personnel. This all took place in an unknown location in the Congo. The gorilla escaped and we were ordered to find it and tranquilize it. I was part of the team that went out to find it. We were able to capture it before it went into a small village. God knows what would have happened if we didn't get there in time. We tranquilized it and placed it into a large crate. We were told to take it to a facility out in the middle of nowhere, and that's exactly what we did. We took the gorilla to this facility and they began working on regaining control of its mind. They were able to do so, but the gorilla was very aggressive towards everyone so they eventually had to shut the project down. The gorilla was eventually put down because it couldn't be trusted. I'm telling you this story because I want you to know that some of the things you read about are true. I know some will call me crazy and say it's just a hoax, but it's not. I'm telling you the truth. 
And if you ever get the chance to go out into the Congo and find this facility, do so. It's still there, and they have since moved on to other experiments with animals. They are very successful in manipulating their minds. However, it doesn't always go as planned, which is why we end up having to deal with them from time to time. Most of the stories that I listen to or read about people seeing unexplained stuff happened to them a long time ago. While I don't doubt their credence, this particular story happened to me only a few weeks back. I'm not 100% sure exactly what I saw because I enjoy reading about this stuff. My brain just went there rather fast, then searching for a logical explanation. However, I'm pretty certain that what I saw was a dog man. I was driving back from work one evening down a road that I use every single day. That's when I noticed this dark figure not too far off in front of me. Whatever it was seemed kind of slumped over, and to be honest, my first thought was that it was some type of bear. Although I've never seen a bear here ever, there are bears in my county, so it wasn't too much of a stretch, and this thing appeared to be pretty big despite looking like it was crouched down. I wasn't exactly afraid, but definitely cautious. I moved the car over a little because there wasn't any traffic on the road, and then I slowed down not to spook whatever it was. As I got closer, I could see that it was indeed crouching down, but it almost seemed to be kneeling, as if its arms were folded in front of it. I'm sure that sounds weird, but that's what it looked like to me. Almost like this thing was praying, or at least some sort of stance that you might see in church. I was thinking that this was very odd to see this thing in this position. Then as I got close enough, I noticed it was a dog. It was a very huge dog. It must have been almost as big as me. And as I said, it was kneeling so it wasn't even at its full height. I reckon if I had been standing, it would have been around 7 feet tall, if not more. The arms, as I've said, were placed upon its knees... And from my vantage point, I could see that it had absolutely massive paws. Of course, the most important part was the head. Very similar to a German shepherd. Actually, it seemed to be just staring. It didn't move. And just for a second, I truly wondered if it was some type of brilliant, elaborate prank. Although I could not think for the life of me why. Then as I drove past it, staring at it, it indeed blinked. You can bet I put my foot down on the gas pedal and shot off like a bat out of hell. I did keep checking in my rearview mirror and that thing never moved. I for sure believed that it was indeed a dog man. I just have no idea why it was sitting there in plain sight as if it was waiting for something or someone. I've been back up and down that road several times since and I haven't seen any trace of it. I was hiking on a trail one late evening in Yosemite National Park. I like to hike at night, and it was awesome how the park would remain open for people like me. I decided to go alone this time because I had a lot on my mind, thinking about a new job that was coming up after college. It was September of 2000, and school was all I ever used to do. I never worked because I was so focused on becoming a lawyer. Putting my work into practice was a terrifying idea. I wanted to be ready for it mentally. And exercise helped me with that. So on my hike I went, following trail maps as the night grew dark. Nature was always my go-to for everything throughout my life. I had been hiking for an hour or so, so it was just after 8pm. I thought I knew where I was on the map. But up ahead, maybe about 30 feet ahead of me, there was this gate that blocked off a road. The gate had a sign attached to it saying, Danger, no trespassing beyond this point. I had never been this way before, so I was not prepared to see anything about no trespassing. I had to rework my hike so that I could find a safe place to set up camp for the night. So I decided to stop and eat my dinner right there before I turned around and found another spot. As I sat in the twilight... Suddenly, two bright lights beamed from the trees behind me. 
shining through some bushes and hitting me so I could see my own shadow on the ground. Before I could turn around, two more shadows of figures appeared on either side of my own. Standing in front of the light were these humanoid-shaped creatures, but it was obvious that their heads were way larger than mine. I didn't understand what I was looking at, and I became petrified. I turned to finally see what was standing over me. About ten feet behind me, these two figures stood under these lights. Very tall, with long arms and covered what appeared to be gray fur. Their faces were hairless, but humanoid-looking, except there were no ears or noses. They didn't seem angry or anything, which surprised me even more, but their eyes were certainly wide and protruding. They could be mistaken for human eyes, I guess, but far creepier. But both held some sort of weapon which resembled a crossbow. It was modern and medieval all at the same time. Whatever they were, they seemed perfectly content doing nothing but staring into my direction through those strange lights. I heard mumbling noises, not discernible words, and I realized that they were talking quietly to each other, most likely about what to do with me. Things got weirder when one really took notice of me staring back at them. He looked into my eyes with this crazy look. I suddenly felt this dread wash over me. He pointed his weapon directly towards me, while otherwise remaining completely still. The other stood motionless and stared at his partner. The one with the weapon shouted at me in a language that I didn't understand. I just took off running and never looked back. At first, I could hear crackling, then snapping of branches behind me as they followed not too far behind. I assumed they wanted me to go with them when they shouted, but I wasn't interested in finding out. After what felt like miles, I turned to see that they were gone and there was no trace of them or any lights. My stuff was back at that weird spot along with my map, but I was just so happy to get away from them. My heart was pounding and I could feel tears welling up in my eyes, knowing that somehow I got away from something that I would never be able to explain. I couldn't comprehend why they weren't chasing me, except that they most likely wanted to do what we all assume aliens want to do, abduct us and perform experiments. After that incident, I stuck to the more populated trails and areas. I never told anyone. I figured no one would ever believe me. I'm not sure what I saw, but I'm convinced it was something supernatural. In the spring of 2015, I visited an area called Lost Creek Wilderness in Colorado, right at the foothills of the Rockies. It's a forested area with several trails that crisscross. The highest peak is called Bison Peak, and it's exactly the kind of small challenge I wanted to give myself. I went there around 11 a.m. to make sure I had the whole day to complete the journey. I had all my supplies in a tent to set up camp when I reached the top. I was always very prepared. I walked up the first trail, which was relatively close to the main road. There was an open field to the other side. At one point, I could see people playing frisbee or picnicking on the ground. I kept going past them and even waved as I turned left up a hillside, overlooking a field. I stood on the edge and looked over for a moment, taking in everyone enjoying the lovely spring weather. The sun was bright enough, even though it wasn't at its highest in the sky. I took a breath, soaking it all in, but suddenly was disturbed by some bushes moving behind me. I turned to check on what it could be, but I didn't see anything. Figuring it was a bird or something small, I decided to continue up to the peak, getting further away from the people as I went. I didn't hear another noise for a half an hour up the trail, which was actually odd. Ever since that rustling sound, I haven't even heard a bird chirp. I kept going, but slower and slower, with my mind racing about what could have scared the birds away. There was a lot of wildlife at Lost Creek, but there was no way an animal like a deer or a bison could have moved that fast through the brush without continuing to make noise. And then there were other things that may or may not live in that forest, but I was sure that along that trail, not only would I be able to spot the threat, 
but that it would end up being okay. That moment when I began to pick up my pace and let my guard down, something knocked very loudly against a tree behind me. Turning quickly, there was nothing but trees everywhere and the trail was empty. I felt like it became darker because of the canopy of the trees. I couldn't make out anything that could be in them. I was beginning to get spooked, which didn't normally happen to me. I began running up the trail towards the next peak, hoping whatever it was would give up following me and leave me alone. It had tracked me silently from that field into the woods. Was it a person, I thought? Fear and worry clouded my mind, forcing my heart to pound faster with each step upward. I heard loose stones near the trail's edge get kicked and a few were propelled far in front of me. Now whatever it was had to be on the path. It had to be seen. I wished afterwards that I hadn't turned around. The first thing that hit me was the smell of a corpse. Then I could see that it was standing about nine feet tall. It had these claws at the end of its fingers which probably helped it remain hidden from tree to tree as it followed me. Its body was like a shambling skeleton with meat and muscle clinging onto the bone for dear life. It swayed a bit with its head cocked sideways. I didn't know what to do except for stare at its skull-like face, gray skin torn and stretched over its beady eyeballs looking down at me. There were tufts of fur in random places with two horns in poor shape, nicked and bent that sat on its head. It began shambling forward with these thin legs and hooves where feet should be. Its mouth was salivating and its nose, which was only two holes in its face, was dripping. It was so gross and horrifying, all I could do was drop all of my things and run. I turned and saw it behind me, wobbling back and forth on all fours trying to catch up, but still fast enough that I couldn't stop even for a breath. Suddenly, I came upon another clearing with some people sitting around a creek and decided that I should run through, hoping not to be followed. Sure enough, after stopping at the creek and turning, this strange horned rotted creature was gone. The people at the creek looked at me hyperventilating and sweating and thought I was on something. I waited there for a while in the grass, afraid to go back for my things. Finally, I ran down to where everything was dropped, and it looked like things were gone through savagely. I grabbed what I could and ran, never going back there again. That was my last hiking trip.